The gilded shrines were inscribed with religious texts. But what I find most fascinating are the inscriptions on the shrines in black ink left by the carpenters who constructed them. The shrines were so large, they had to be carried in in pieces and reassembled inside the burial chamber. On the front of the side panels was the front of a lion, meaning front. It was pronounced hot. On the rear was the hindquarters of a baboon, meaning rear, pronounced something like pe. Those hieroglyphs matched those inked on the roofs of the shrines that were to be aligned accordingly, the ancient equivalent of insert tab A into slot A. Here's a photo of a section where two of the shrine's panels join. Let me orient you a bit. We're looking at the shrine from the side. What we see on the right, extending out, is the open door. The door is decorated with magical hieroglyphs. One we're familiar with, the backbone of Osiris. It ensures stability. The other is new to us. It's called the Knot of Isis, and it represents how the goddess tied the full-length sheath she wore. It provides the protection of Isis. See the black ink on the vertical panel? It's the forefront of the lion, reading from right to left. Now look above it, to the left, and you'll see a matching lion on the horizontal piece. Let's look at a couple of snapshots I took of these instructions when I was last in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Here we have three hieroglyphs. The top two are easy and make sense. They tell us that part of the panel goes in front, and the hieroglyph behind it tells us to orient that side to the west. This makes sense. The doors, which are in the front, have to open to the west, the land of the deceased. The third hieroglyph, one just beneath the lion, is the sign for south, indicating that the side on which it's written should face south. Let's see what's written on its counterpart, the opposite side of the shrine. Again, we see front and west, this time reading right to left. Beneath them is a whip, the hieroglyph for north. This north hieroglyph makes sense. If it's the opposite counterpart faces south, this side will face north. Carter had a difficult time dismantling the shrines. He had very little space to work in, the wood was dry and fragile, and the workmen who assembled the shrines didn't always follow the inked instructions, so sometimes the roof was forced onto the sides of the shrine. Still, he disassembled the shrines, removed them from the tomb, and had them conserved. Today, you can visit them in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. When you do, look for the inked workman's instructions. Very few people know they're there.